Hey, it's Ed. Today I would like to show you a few things that I just learned about using chord tracks in Logic Pro for iPad 2.0, and I'm hoping that you'll get some use out of them too. I recently did a video on getting chords out of Scalar, and I got so excited from using the chords in that video and playing around with them that I decided to see how far I could take it. And I haven't spent that much time on it, and it's quite amazing to me what you can do with just a little knowledge of the chord track and how to use it. So I think if you watch this video, you get a, you'll get something out of it that'll be worthwhile. Let me, first of all, describe what I have here. I have a uh, project uh, that I created today, ver very quickly actually. What I started with is this track you see right here, this afternoon dreaming vocal chop, Apple Loop. I started off with that and I thought, I wonder if I could create an entire song just based off of this loop and make it all stick together, you know, make something that's coherent. And um, I mean, this is no great track or anything, no, nothing special, but I do think it hangs together. So let me play a bit of it and you can get an idea of what it sounds like. Here we go. The other thing I did I wanted to demonstrate, I'll demonstrate this later, is this section here involves a key change. So I'll play a little bit of that for you. So there you go. So let me break this down for you. So basically, uh, if you'll notice, if we open up Apple Loops, if you look very carefully, at the Apple Loops uh, that are available, you'll see that there's a description and then below it there's a BPM, which is the beats per minute, uh, the number of bars, and then some of them, however, will actually show um, chord symbols. Some will not, like this uh, 70s electric piano, for example. It just says C on it. But if you look at this one, this eight track tape electric piano, it says two bars. Uh, it's got a little chord symbol, A sharp. Uh, if you look down further, yeah, above and beyond synth right here, four bars C minor. Um, that one doesn't have the chord symbol. This one does above the cloud space. So, but what I can tell you is that there's there's countless, uh, these are the uh, audio loops. Um, there's the MIDI loops. There's also the pattern loops. And then there's uh, as well, I, I, you can't see them here, but there's also um, session player loops as well. And um, so, these have, uh, a, it seems the majority of these, with I think the exception of the GarageBand sound pack, looks like all of them that I can find actually have chord information in them. So when you bring these in, you're going to be bringing in chord information. And what I'd like to show next is how I built up this little song right here uh, and made it all hang together with these chords. So let's jump back out of here and into a brand new project right here, which I've got ready to go. So what I'm gonna do here is um, I got this little stem kind of sitting here waiting. I'm gonna take that first loop that I showed you right there, that afternoon dreaming vocal chop, and drop that right in there. And notice at the top here, if you look right above that, it says C minor, the chord track is basically empty, that's a default. It's in the key of C minor, if you look at the top there in the, in the status bar. Uh, now, and if I drop this in here, you'll notice it did two things. It dropped in the loop, and it also populated the chord track at the top with the chords from this loop. And uh, that's a nice feature. So basically, uh, right off the bat, I not only have an Apple loop to work with, but I've got a chord sequence that I can work with. Now, I could take that chord sequence and get rid of the loop if I, if I think I like that chord sequence and just start working with the session players. But that's not, that's not what I'm gonna do here. I, it's something I suggest you give a try. It's something certainly worth giving a shot. But what I wanna show you here is what I did specifically, which is started from a loop and then built up um, a whole series of tracks together in a project um, that would have some coherence. So first, first track here, we've got this Apple loop right here, This this audio loop. The next thing I did 
uh, is I went over to the tracks plus here. Let's add a track for keyboard player. There we go, right there. And it's uh, defaulted to freely, that's fine. Let's add a bass player next. All right. All right, there's our bass player. So we're making progress already here. You'll notice that the keyboard player and the bass player don't have the symbols. Um, I believe that's simply because by default they follow the global chord track. So you don't really need to see the symbols on these. Um, if you change it to follow region chords, then they will. I'm not gonna go into all those details, but just to let you know, you know, they are uh, they are gonna follow what's whatever's on the top, and that will come in handy later in the video. I'll show you how that works. So um, let me in the meantime just color this in so it's a little easier to see, give it something that's a little more visible. There we go. All right, so now we've got our chord track, we've got our odd audio loop here. Keyboard player, bass player. Let's throw in a drum player. If I can get to my plus sign. Get over here, drummer. Let's add our drummer. Uh, let's, here we go, retro rock. I think that'll probably be a good choice. All right, let's see how this sounds so far. Uh, tempo's a little high. I think I'm going to bring that down just a little bit, maybe down, something like that. This is going to be a little different than the other track, but it's going to basically be the same process. All right, there we go. All right, now let me add another track here, and I'll show you how to use these chords to do other things beyond just the 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 key the, the session players so let's add another track here let's make it uh alchemy synth that's fine and then let's take these chords at the top here let's copy those let's put the cursor down here and do paste it playhead it automatically creates a midi region there it is now um this is where it gets interesting now that we've got a, a midi region now if we hit play I mean, that's, that's all right, but if we want to do a little something with these chords, now this work is, you can get really powerful. We can go in here. We've got MIDI chords. Now what we can do is we can go in here and we can uh, add uh, something like a, an arpeggiator, or we can add a, an AUV3 instrument um, uh, that will handle chords and then manipulate the output. Any, anything at all could be put in here. I'm just going to put an arpeggiator in real quick. And let's see what that does. All right, not bad, not bad. Now, uh, that was pretty fast, right? I mean, we've gone from zero to having almost a fully formed groove in a matter of minutes. And um, the other thing we can do here is... Uh, we can add a pattern. So let me add a pattern here. Let me go and find, this is the pattern that I had with the other tracks. So this will probably work fine. Let's see, picked it up as E sharp, E flat five. Okay, now here's something I, I wanna point out real quick. You'll notice that the key up here is C minor um, in this track or this project, I should say, which is different the other the other project, I think it was in D minor. So what's gonna happen, what you'll notice, and it's not really very important, but it's just something you should know about, is when you import the Apple loops, they will change, uh, the chords will appear differently depending on which key you've set up here. And I have to warn you, if you do change this key, I'll go ahead and do it real quick for you. Um, it's gonna change everything in this track. You can see all the chords have changed, which is a good thing and a bad thing. So it's, it's a good thing in the way that everything um, is going to stay um, in sync. Let's make sure that that's the case here. Yep, seems like it stayed in sync. However, if you were to go um, in, he in here 
and start um, doing something like changing. It, it, it's important here. I'll tell you why this is important. Um, the global track is what's holding everything together here. The, the key, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna start doing things with these chords, the key to working with this is use the global track. So if you're gonna copy something, copy it from the global track to the region. And then if you're gonna start with the region, copy from the region to the global track. I'll right click and show you how that, how that appears. So you can go, I can go into this region and I can say piece, paste region chords to global track or vice versa. I can go to the global track and I can, um, I can copy from here. It's not the same command. I can copy from here and I can paste into these regions. I believe you can, on the uh, session tracks, yeah, you can actually paste chords from global track right off the menu. Uh, for a, a MIDI region like this, for example, you have to you have to go here, copy these chords, and then paste them down in here. And um, so that's that's a little bit different. And uh, I don't think you can do much with the chords. Let's see if we can. Let's see what happens if we were to copy the chords from here. Let's try this and see what happens if I copy this. See what happens if I paste these chords in in here. Can I do it? I cannot. I cannot paste the chords in here, apparently. Yeah, the pattern will not let me do that. So patterns are somewhat limited in what you can do with chords. I think uh, maybe there's a trick to that that I don't know about yet. But um, one thing to keep in mind, though, is uh, if you start doing something like changing, a, a transposing a key, for example. If you go in here, and if I go in here, and I transpose this, let's say I, I bring this up three, right? You'll notice that chords changed. Let's see, let me go back. I'll go up three, done. Here we go. Okay, the chords did change now, yeah. When I, when I did the transpose of three semitones. And now if I, if I go out here, actually that sounds pretty good. It seems like it didn't mess it up, but it certainly can, it certainly can mess things up. All right, on to the final section here where we talk about uh, introducing key changes and transposition. This is where things get a little tricky with what I was talking about before. So if you're interested in this, stick around. If not, you know, no worries at all. Um, but it does give some insight into the way the chord tracks work and the way the global track is, is kind of the, the gatekeeper for everything. So let me show you how this works. So let me take, um, I've got the copy function on here. So I'm going to take this audio loop right here drag it over, just slide it right there, and duplicate it. I'm gonna go into the region. I'm gonna transpose it by three semitones. Uh, you'll notice now that it's, uh, that first chord has changed from an F something to an A flat something, right? So the transpos transposition adjusted the chords on that track, and they will play differently. So if I play if I solo this out, for example, uh, and play it, and if I jump over here, you'll hear the difference. So yeah, it definitely it definitely transposed correctly. And um, now the thing is, I want to have these chords. I want to have the the session player follow these chords. And in order for me to do that, I've got to get these chords back to the global track. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go uh, chords, and then I'm gonna select paste region chords to go global track. And it's gonna paste them right above, right there. So let me just uh, do one more thing, which is give them a little color. I'll make it uh, orange, how about that? Yeah, an orange color. So make it stand out a little bit. So there they are. So now we've got a new set of chords. Um, transposed up by three semitones from the ones here, basically, because it, it inherited the transposition from, from this audio track. And now we can simply take our keyboard player and using our duplicate option up above, slide that, 
We could take our bass player, slide that. Drummer doesn't actually need to worry about uh, melodic stuff, so that's not going to be a factor. Uh, now the MIDI region, that's this gets a little trickier. We've got to go up here and we can't just drag that MIDI region. If we drag that MIDI region, it's not going to reinterpret the chords. Don't know why, probably because it's not what Apple, Apple might have had in mind when, when this function was introduced. Copying and pasting into the tracks is supported, but I'm not sure if it's something that Apple was fully anticipating and planning for people to use. Anyway, it's there. So let's do this. We'll copy this. Um, and then we're gonna go down here and do play, paste it playhead. Let me try that again. There it goes. Okay, somehow I'm, I tapped wrong. So as you can see here now, the chords did inherit the transposition. And uh, this here, um, I can copy this as well. Actually, I can just drag it as I did with the others. I can copy this as well, I'm gonna, but I'm going to have to manually transpose this one as well because uh, it's, it's not going to pick up the chord information. So this is our little exception to the, the chord and global chord function that we'd normally have. So if I've done everything correctly, um, let's see how this sounds and if it's stayed intact. The mixing hasn't been done, so it's going to be a little, a little out of balance right now. It's sort of got the defaults. But let's see how this sounds on this transpose section here. Let's take a listen. Yeah, seems like it, it worked out okay. So there you go. Um, that's basically the gist of it. Um, there's all sorts of things that you can do with these techniques. This is just scratching the surface. But I think you get the idea now. The key, again, is this global track is going to make sure that when you, when you copy these chords around, I, I recommend copying into the global track, from the region into the global track, like this into the global track, or from the global track out, or one of these into the global track, so on and so forth. If you were to try to like copy the chords from here, for example, uh, copy region chords and go over here, um, let's for kicks just see what happens. If I do that, looks like it worked in this case, but there are cases where um, it seems to get a little confused and it sort of relies on that global track to keep, to keep things uh, synchronized. Now, if I go up here, let me show you one last thing, uh, if you're still sticking around. I'm gonna change the key signature up here. I think you saw this before, but I can, I can change the key signature and it's gonna shift everything in that project to the new key. So that's the other beautiful thing is if all your tracks are coded in terms of, of key, which these are, then if you wanted to shift your project in another key, you can just tap up here and change the key instantly. Um, I don't know how well that works, you know, for things that have been programmed in, um, you know, typed in by hand or through MIDI or recorded in through the, the play surface and things like that. Um, I'm not sure if it would transpose everything. I know the loops automatically transpose, and and that's one thing. And these chords transpose because I think that's part of the design, but I don't think everything would transpose. So again, the chords, the chord track and the chord structure that's in, embedded in these is extremely helpful. Once again, thanks for watching and have fun. Take care.